In this video, I'll be showing it to you how you can download and install SQL Server 2025 on your Windows 11 machine. So you want to go to the Evaluation Center, the link will be in the description of this video. Now once you're on this website, you're going to download the exe file. Once that is done, open the executable file. Choose an installation type, we're going to go with Download Media. Choose the path where you want your file to be downloaded. I'll be putting mine to my D drive. You can keep the ISO format and then select download. This download is definitely dependent on the speed of your computer. So this will take approximately five to 10 minutes. The download is complete. So let's open the folder, open the ISO file and then browse for the setup.exe. Let's maximize this window. Then you're gonna to go to installation, then select new standalone installation. Now here you're going to choose your edition. Now in previous version, you were not able to use a standard developer edition. You only, want, you only add one developer edition. So this is an improvement where you can choose between an enterprise developer version and a standard developer version. So we're going to go with enterprise and then select next, accept the license and then select next. Let's maximize this window. Select next to continue. We don't want the Azure extension for SQL Server. So select next to continue. Select the database engine. That is what we need and then select next. Now, because I have several instances of SQL Server already installed, I can't use the default instance. So you have to provide a name for my instance. Now, in your case, you don't have to do this. You can just select default and continue. So here I'm just going to select next. Now, it's good practice to use service accounts when you're setting up SQL Server for an organization. However, in this case, using the default named accounts provided is fine. Um, if you're using SQL Server on your machine, you want to keep note of your startup type. I normally keep mine to manual. So when my computer starts, it doesn't start automatically, right? And use up my memory. So select next. Here you're going to choose your authentication mode. So you have the Windows authentication mode and mix mode. I'll be using the mix mode authentication. Now the difference is here you have to set a password for your SA account and it will also allow you to log in with SQL Server accounts. If, if you don't enable mixed mode authentication and you try to log in with a SQL Server account, that is going to fail. So let me add the current user as well. Now let's go on the data directories. Now these are the default. Now ideally you want to ensure you place your log files and your data files on separate drives when you're setting up for a computer. When you're setting it up in an organization, also your backup directory. Now your system database doesn't grow a lot, so it's okay. Well, you can get away with keeping them on the C drive, but again, it's not ideal or recommended. Now let's go over to the temp DB. This will be configured based on the number of CPUs that you have. The max DOP is also automatically computed. So the default is fine in most cases. Let's go over to memory here. We want to select recommended and we want to adjust this based on how much we want the SQL server to use. Now this will say it at about 80% of your server memory. So I only want to use about three gigs of my laptop memory. So I'm making that adjustment and then accept the recommendation because I don't want when SQL Server start on my local PC, it eats up all my memory. So that's why I made that adjustment. Then select next, review the configs and then select install. The installation will take about three to six minutes to complete. Now the installation has been completed. I'm not gonna eat okay because it will restart my computer. Now to install Management Studio, head over back to the Installation Center and then select Install SQL Server Management Tools. Scroll down and select the Download SMS 21 link. Once the download is complete, open the executable file, select Continue. 
Now here if you go ahead and select install, you'll install the core components. However, you have the option to add enhancements like the AI assistance, business intelligence, and, and code tools. If you work with SQL Server reporting services, then you may want to install the business intelligence, right? So I'm going to select that option and check SQL Server reporting service. Now, these are add-ons. You don't need them, right? And if you need to do stuff like GitHub or Code Control, then you use Code Tools and it will allow version control. Now, with hybrid and migration, this facilitates things like your migration processes. So if you need to change the installation location, you can change it from the install locations here. For different language packs, you can select the language packs option and choose the language of your choice. And under individual components, these are the same components that we selected from workload. Then select install to continue. So I'm going to pause the video and restart. So here I'm just going to go ahead and launch SQL Server Management Studio. Note that the icon looks a little bit different. So skip another account later. So there's a new connection catalog. It's only available for the database engine. So we're going to select AS here. Specify your server name. In my case, it's localhost because it's on my laptop. That's where it's, it's installed, right? And my instance name is MS2025. I'm using Windows Authentication. I'm going to trust server certificate and connect. And that's basically it, guys. So that's it for now. Thank you for watching and see you in the next video. For more training, you can check out my Udemy courses. The link is in the description of this video.